started. So right now we are in unit two, kinematics two, and these are the lesson we'll complete today. Equations of motion in two dimensions and projectile motion in two dimension. So if you are seeing this screen, you need two kinematics two and those lessons, please give me a thumbs up so that I can make sure that you are seeing it. Thank you very much. And then if you have any question about any, any of your uh, homework, assignment, unit activity, please let me know, okay? Communication is always the power, okay? So make sure to message, text me so that, so that I can guide you. And then we'll start with from equation of motion in two dimensions. So the objective of this lesson is you will apply basic kinematic equation and relationship to the objects moving in two dimensions. So that is the goal for this lesson. So at first, we'll talk a little bit about relative velocity, okay? So let me read that first point. The velocity of a moving object depends on the position from which it is observed. That means, uh, if we are, let us suppose a car is moving, okay? A car is moving in a highway. And then at first, we are measuring the velocity of car with respect to the ground, okay? And we get one velocity. Now in second case, we are following that car and we are measuring the velocity of that car with respect to is with respect to our velocity. In that case, we'll get another velocity. So that means whenever we, whenever we measure the velocity of any object, it depends how do we measure, okay? From which position, okay? And then that from which the point of view or perspective from which object motion is observed is called the frame of reference, okay? Frame of reference. In generally, in generally, we use the earth surface as the frame of reference to specify the velocity of any moving objects such as car or trains, okay? Yes. Now, let me, let me briefly explain the concept, how do we apply the concept of relative velocity. So let us suppose plane's velocity relative to the air is 600 km per hour towards east, okay? And then there is 20 km per hour wind's velocity relative to the ground towards west. Then relative velocity of the plane with respect to the ground becomes 580 km per hour. Because here the plane's velocity and wind's velocity, they are opposite to each other. So whenever we find relative velocity, we have to subtract 20 km per hour from 600 km per hour. We are subtracting, think like that. If the direction is different, okay, we'll subtract. And in second case, both plane's velocity with respect to air and wind's velocity relative to the ground, they are in the same direction. That means we'll air those together, okay? Air those together and then relative velocity will be 680 kilometer per hour. In both cases, we do have only one direction. Here we are using X direction. But if there are two directions, X and Y, then we'll use Pythagorean theorem. We'll use Pythagorean theorem to find the magnitude of relative velocity. So in third case, plane's velocity is again 600 km per hour east, but this time wind velocity relative to the ground is south and it's 45 km per hour. So the re resultant velocity is along east south direction, east south direction. And to calculate resultant velocity, we'll use Pythagorean theorem. 
that is square root of resultant velocity is square root of planes velocity related to the air that's square plus square of winds velocity related to the air and then we'll calculate those two and get 602 kilometers per hour okay. if you have any question please let me know i'll pause here for some time and after that we'll work on some of the problems from the mastery test Okay, now let's work on the problem then. Okay, let me make a diagram. A boat is a boat is headed due east across a river at a velocity of 20 meter, 25 meter per second with respect to water. Boat is moving east. Velocity of boat with respect to water is 25 meter per second. Velocity of the river current is 2.7 meter per second due north. Velocity of water 2.7 meter per second. What is the angle at which the boat will deviate from the original path? So, so you can see here this is east direction and then north direction. So the resultant resultant velocity will have a direction east north. And that is the direction of the boat. Okay, east north. And we have to calculate this angle. Suppose this is theta. Okay. And then you can see here, this is a right triangle triangle. BW is your opposite. And B BW is your adjacent. And then I do have a question for you. Let me. Okay. So, out of three trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, and tangent, which trigonometric function will use opposite and adjacent of a triangle? Okay. My question is that. And I'll give you some time to think about that question. Which trigonometric function do we have, do we have to use to calculate that angle or think like? Which trigonometric function include opposite and adjacent of a triangle? Okay. And then write your either annotate your answer here. That's fine. Write either sine, cosine, or tangent here on the screen, or write that in your chat box. Okay, chat. Or you can turn on your uh, mic and then tell me that answer. I'll give you some time. Okay, so the answer is we'll use ten. Okay, tangent. What is the correct choice here? Sorry. This tangent and then ten tangent theta. That angle is your opposite or your BW over adjacent. And then. Then of theta opposite is your 2.7 over 25. So to calculate angle, we have to take inverse. So angle is theta is your 10 inverse 2.7 over 25. And then we have to calculate that value 10 inverse 2.7 over 25. So use Desmos to calculate that value. Okay. I have shown you previously how to calculate inverse value in Desmos. I'll show you again. But at first, I'll give you some time to figure it out. Google that Desmos, okay? Google that Desmos, and then use that Desmos as a calculator and calculate 10 inverse 2.7 over 25. I'll give you some time. And once you calculate, answer that question, okay? I have launched the poll, you can answer that question.
Okay, I'll end this poll here, okay, and then I'll work on this problem. Thank you very much for the participation. Okay, let me make sure. Are you all seeing this screen? It says desmos.com calculator. If you are seeing this screen, please give me a thumbs up, okay? I just want to make sure that you are seeing that screen. Okay. If you are seeing that screen, please give me a thumbs up. It says dismos.com calculator. Okay, thank you very much. And I'll share that link with you all in message as well. You can bookmark and use that as calculator, okay? So a first step, you have to go to that website that I have shared that information in your chat. You have to calculate 10 in bus 2.7 over 2.25. Uh, so whenever you open your Desmos calculator, it looks like that. Go to that keypad. Go to that keypad. Go to, after that, go to the function and you can see here, 10 in bus is here, 10 in bus trigonometry 10 inverse and it was 2.7 divided by 25 and then by default all of your angles will be in the radian okay so we have to change that to degree in our setting so you'll go to the setting graph setting go all the way to the down and you see degree click on that degree so the, the angle is 6.16, that is nearly equal to 6.2 degree. Okay. And I'll be sharing same screen. Okay. So the correct choice is A. So this is 6.2 degree and that is A. In that way, you can calculate angle. Now let's go to the next question. The question is, the current in a river is one meter per second. Brittany swims 300 meters against the current. If she normally swims with a speed of Two meter per two meters per second in still water. How long does it take her to complete the trip? Okay. So at first you can see here we do have speed of the current of a river and then uh, Brittany speed in still water. So let's find Brittany speed in a river. Okay. I'll write Brittany speed in a river is or relative speed. I'll just write speed. Relative speed, okay, relative speed. I'll just write relative speed. Speed of Brittany. Brittany. That is S, okay. Okay. It's relative speed Brittany. In a river, I'll write like in a river, okay. So river as a so let us suppose Brittany Brittany swims two meter per second, and current of water is one meter per second like that. So two minus one becomes one meter per second. Two minus one meter per second. That is the relative speed of a Brittany in a river. One meter per second. We have to subtract the speed of current in a river. After that, we found the speed. The speed is your distance over time. And then the speed is your one, distance is your 300 over time. Now you have to calculate time, okay? I'll give you some times. So you do have this equation, one is equal to 300 over T. Okay, find the time from that equation. I'll give you some time. Okay. It's very straightforward. It will take few seconds. 
Yeah, I just want to make sure that you are following everything. Okay. Okay, let me in following. Thank you very much for the participation. Okay. Now let me work on that problem. So to solve for T, okay, look, this T is in your denominator. Either you have to cross multiply it. One times T is your T and 300 times one is your 300. It's 300 second. Or to get rid of T, multiply both side on T like that. T times one times T, T, T got canceled. So that is T times one is T is 300 seconds. So the correct choice is D and then it will take 300 seconds for Brittany to complete the trip. Okay, in that way you can solve this problem. Okay, I'll pause here for some time. If you have any question, let me know. If you followed this problem, please give me a thumbs up, okay? Okay, let's go to the next problem. The question is, so we do have two vectors. We can see here 5.8 meter per second, that's towards the east and then 1.2 meter per second towards the west. Get these two velocity vectors to find the magnitude of their resultant vector. So we are adding those two vectors, but whenever we are adding, we have to always take an account of direction as well. And this problem is straightforward. So let me launch the poll where you can answer this question, okay? I'll give you some time to think about this problem and answer that question, this question. Okay, thank you everybody for the participation. Let's do it. So here you can see that 5.8 meter per second is towards east and 1.2 per second is toward west. So whenever we take consideration of their direction, this velocity is just 5.8 meter per second addition and this one is, so this is towards west. So if we reverse the direction towards east to subtract or add, it would become negative 1.2 per second. So we have to subtract 5.8 minus 1.2 is your 4.6 meter per second. So the correct choice is A. So if the direction is opposite, we'll have to subtract. And then if the direction is same, we'll be adding. Now we have completed 
uh, we have completed equation of motion in two dimension now we'll start projectile motion from a horizontal launch okay that is our new lesson and in this lesson you will analyze the motion of projectile launched horizontally in a uniform gravitational field when friction is negligible okay so our goal is to analyze the motion of projectile when launched horizontally and then whenever we launch those projectile we'll consider there is no air friction and there is always uniform gravitational field okay these are some of the assumption whenever we'll work on the problem related to a projectile launched projectile launch let's briefly discuss what is projectile and then what are the examples of projectiles here okay and then i'll get my pen here okay an object that's launched into the air is called projectile any object okay and then so the ball that you throw from a deck and a food package released from a cargo plane are both projectiles these are examples and you can see other examples they are bullet fired from a rifle and then water that is spouting out from a hose or golf ball it from a tee and a snow border going off or jump these are all the examples of a projectile motion and then whenever we work on a projectile motion projected with initial velocity we'll always assume negligible air resistance negligible air resistance okay think about that and then whenever the objects moves through the air that will only act by force of gravity okay only force acts on that object is force due to gravity okay and the path the path that the that the object travels through the air is its trajectory so trajectory is the path of the object that travels through the air that is the definition of trajectory okay let's go to the next slide path of a horizontal projectile so here is a diagram showing the trajectory of a horizontally launched ball okay and then at any point of the trajectory and okay, at any point of the trajectory we can find out horizontal and vertical components okay and then horizontal component is represented as vx vx and vertical component is represented as by b is the resultant velocity now we'll work on a problem this problem consider two parts okay two parts we'll simplify this problem and then uh, we'll use different kinematic equation and then based on the situation we'll simplify that kinematic equation and solve this problem this problem is this problem is long it will take some time so so let me ask someone to read it who wants to volunteer and read this problem do anybody wants to volunteer and read this problem that would be great if you wants to want to volunteer and read the problem any of you you can just unmute and read that problem it's fine or you can just tell me in chat i want to read that problem so that i can ask you to unmute and you can read this problem i'll give you some time to think about it okay okay let me read it consider this two part problem john throws a ball horizontally from 
horizontal east from his apartment deck with an initial velocity of 5 meter per second. So he throws a ball from here, initial velocity that is B x0, okay, horizontal direction, 5 meters per second, which is given. The ball reaches the ground in 4 seconds, okay. Well, First question A, how far the east from the base of the apartment did the ball land? So that means this is the apartment, this is our east direction. So we have to calculate that displacement and that is called horizontal displacement X. That is part A. And part B, what is the vertical component of ball's velocity just before it reaches the ground? So somewhere here. This is B and then BY that is a vertical component of velocity BX. So second part we have to calculate vertical component of velocity. Okay. These are the two questions. And that is the diagram. So whenever we work on this problem, we know that. So we are measuring height from here, height from here. So at this point, initial vertical displacement or in both cases, horizontal and vertical are zero. Okay, are zero. Now let's go to the second slide, okay. For part A, we have to calculate horizontal displacement. So we'll use displacement equation. And we know that, we know that x zero is zero that is your initial displacement and there is no horizontal oscillation for the projectile always ax is always zero we'll only have ay so that means x zero is zero and then ax zero is also zero so it becomes x is equal to bx zero times t now let's plug in those value and solve it it's five times four is your 20. 20 meter. So horizontal displacement is 20 meter or the ball land 20 meter it's from the apartment. I'll pause here for some time. If you have any question up to this part, please let me know. And if you understand it, please give me a thumbs up so that I can move to this, this section where we have to find vertical velocity. Thank you. Now let's do on the second part. We have to find the vertical velocity. So we'll use velocity equation. By is your by zero plus ayt. So we do not have initial vertical velocity that is zero. We only have horizontal vertical velocity. Part is zero. So by becomes ay times t. After that, we just have to substitute those value. A here, vertical oscillation is always oscillation due to gravity, okay? Oscillation, gravity that Ay is always negative 9.8 meter per second square. So we substitute that value. Time is here. So that is negative 39 meter per second. So we got vertical velocity in that way. So the ball lands 20 meters to the east from the apartment and it has a final vertical velocity of 39 meters per second downward. Okay. In that way we can solve this problem. Now let's talk about simplified equation for the horizontal and vertical velocity. Okay. And then you can find those information in your tutorial or you can write you if you if you have pen and paper you can write it okay first one we are talking about horizontal and vertical velocity horizontal velocity final is your initial so equation one i'm just naming one two three four okay three four by Final vertical velocity is your Ay times t. Ay is oscillation of gravity. X, vertical horizontal displacement, initial horizontal velocity times times 
y vertical displacement is 1 over 2 acceleration of gravity times t square and then generally we'll use those four equations whenever we solve any problems related to projectile motion let's do it Let me read this problem. I'll make a diagram and then we'll solve this problem together. A swimmer rounds over a horizontal diving board at a speed of 0 0.95 meter per second. That is Bx0, 95 meter per second. Time is your two seconds. Okay. Let us suppose this is a diving board. Okay. Diving board and then swimmer runs over horizontal diving boards and see it's the water so let us suppose this is a water okay suppose this is a swimmer and land here like that okay let's see what are the things we need to calculate okay horse what are the height of the diving board we have to calculate this value y vertical displacement okay. second how far from the board was the swimmer when she is the ground calculate that value is here x calculate y and x to so calculate vertical displacement and horizontal displacement let's go back vertical displacement is y is your 1 over 2 a y times t square horizontal displacement x is your bx0 times t let me write those two equation at first y is your 1 over 2 a y times t square x is your bx0 times t so use those two equation and then a y is always negative 9.8 meter per second square that is acceleration of gravity okay. okay you do have all those information so you should be able to calculate a vertical displacement and horizontal displacement i'll give you some time to calculate those value take your time use desmos or any calculator you have calculate those values and answer this this question I'll give you around two minutes to complete this question Okay, everybody keep working, okay, and make sure to calculate those values. And this question is from your mastery test, okay? okay. Let me cross the window and then I'll work on this problem. Thank you for the participation. Okay. One over two, we plug in those value. 1 over 2 ay is negative 9.8 t square is your 2.0 square use calculator you will get value around 
I would say 19.8 or something. So that was nearly equal to 20. And then unit is always meters. Okay, unit is always meters. And then let's calculate second one. X is your B, X zero is your nine five. And then time is two seconds. 0 0.95 times 2 is your 1.9 meters. 9 meters, so the, so the correct choice is a 20 meters uh, is vertical displacement or the height of the diving board. Diving board, and then how far the board was the swimmer when she hit the ground? She was at 1.9 meters far from the uh, diving board. So now let me go back. If you have any question, please let me know about this problem. Let me go back. Then. So today we have completed two lessons from unit two, kinematics two, that are equation of, equations of motion in two dimension projectile motions in two dimension. So keep working on your courseware and make sure to complete from the beginning to all the way projectile motion in two dimensions. And if you have any question, please feel free to reach out to me, okay? If you have any questions related to your homework or assignment. So, so if, now I'll stop sharing. If you do not have any question, you can leave this live session and if you have any question, please stay here with me. Okay. Bye bye. Have a great day. Thank you very much. I'll stay here for some time. If you have any question, please let me know. I'll end this live session.